hello and welcome to a yet another, I know, another, what are we, Taylor Swift releasing two albums in one year, it's another bonus podcast from Nothing But Static. Why are we doing an extra podcast, you're probably wondering. You might be watching this on the YouTube channel, I've not decided if I'm going to put it up on there yet, but um, why are we doing an extra podcast is probably the question you're asking yourself right now. Well, very briefly, um, I, the other night, started making notes on some Star Wars news that started to trickle through, because... Um, they, I knew there was a Disney investor event on. I didn't think we generally they do investor calls all the time, and they don't tend to announce a whole lot. So I saw a couple of Star Wars announcements, and I started a, a notepad document and started noting them down for uh, the next nothing but static. You know, we do news at the top of the, an average episode of this podcast, and then they made some more Star Wars announcements, and some more Star Wars announcements, and then some more, and then they started going into the insanity of Disney announcements, and then they announced a bunch of stuff for FX, and they announced a bunch of stuff for Marvel. And it was suddenly, I'd, it had gone from being like 10, 11 o'clock at, the, in, at night in the UK, and, and, and it was now 3 a.m., uh, and I was still making notes. Um, you, you, because what I love about this is, you must have been so surprised, because you, I imagine fairly instantly, had sent me those messages. Yes, and then you must have been so shocked when at, I think one a.m. I you started replied. responding. Yeah, <laughs> uh, well, because I, I my assumption was you were asleep because pre- there was another yeah. night this happened. It was like Comic Con last year or something, and it was Marvel doing a bunch of rounds. I just sent you stuff across the night, knowing you could wake up and you'd have all the news sort of yeah there, and you wouldn't have to go digging through Twitter to find out what my the fuck had happened the phone, night before. My phone was in the other room on charge, so I get in, I get into bed. And I'm in a tired, weird state. And I see that I've got like 30 messages from you. And because it was all the announcements at once, which I'm, I'm, as you say, very grateful for, because it does, it means that, you know, you you become my, as you were for the election, you become my filter for the news sort of thing. Mm. But I'll be honest with you, in my tired state, I looked at things like Obi-Wan series with Hayden Christ- Christensen back and some of the Marvel stuff. And I honestly, before I replied to you, I googled to check that it wasn't some elaborate joke on your part. Because <laughs> some of the announcements are so bonkers yes. that I wondered whether you were taking the piss. <laughs> like, because because of the combination of the announcements, the fact that it was 1am, the fact that I'd been staring at a screen for three hours looking at the same thing. Like, I just... <laughs> So yeah, it was it was it was some of the announcements, man. We 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 talk about it, but yeah. So that's why suddenly at one a.m. But what I love is you and I then talked for about an hour because and I and for that entire hour I was like, I should go to sleep. But this is like my favorite line was I messaged Ronnie and I said, it's like they're throwing darts at post-it notes and they've ended up with the three men in the baby reboot with Zac Efron. <laughs> like it was just so nuts. Like. It's hard to almost believe it's this much stuff. And it got to the point where we didn't want this to ruin our Christmas podcast because this is a podcast in itself because it's so much stuff they've announced. So let's... Should we just crack on, Chris? Because this... Oh, man. I'm staring at this list and feeling dread at how long we're going to be here. (laughs) That's fine. Some of it we'll power through. Let's do it. Okay. So let's start at the start. There are two spin-offs from The Mandalorian that have been announced. Uh, Rangers of the New Republic and Ahsoka. The Ahsoka series will obviously have Rosario Dawson playing Ahsoka. Um, and we presume the little tease from The Mandalorian this year of her wider quest, you know, the Grand Admiral Thorne reference, means potentially that Ahsoka series will show will, will feature her following him. Um, and that that was just a little setup for the, for, the, for, the, for, the, for the spin-off. And the Rangers of the New Republic series, they haven't clarified this. And I wonder if that's partly to do with the, the, some questions about Gina Carano right now. But the uh, Cara Dune character is a ranger of the New Republic. Most people think it's going to be a spin-off featuring her. Her recent political stuff has maybe got her in some hot water. She's kind of an anti-mask person. There's been some questions about her being def- difficult on set as a result of that, or a bit of a di- bit, bit challenging to work with for that reason. I don't know if that's true. Um... There have been various reports. Whether that will happen or not, I don't know. But Range of the New Republic, definitely another Mandalorian sort of time period piece, where probably with that character in the lead. Um, but who knows what that is <laughs> in general. Um, shall I list some more stuff or do you have any thoughts do you want to throw in on either of those? Because I'm just, I'm just very only, excited. Only that, yeah, the Soka series is great and I think they... Um, wonderful timing, do you know what I mean? Like, wait mm. for peak excitement. And then and then drop that. Um, I think it 
it it does make that episode feel even more like a backdoor pilot but that's not necessarily a criticism mm. um and i will say i saw a great image i think it was oh, what's his surname i want to make sure i get it right there's a youtuber uh called andre uh well i think his youtube account is black nerd comedy andre andre meadows posted on instagram it was an image and it was the it was the rangers of the new republic logo and it said what most people saw, Rangers of the New Republic, and then what Power Rangers fans saw, and it was just the word Rangers. <laughs> like, <laughs> kind of, that logo looks like it could be a Power Rangers logo, and I laughed because that's exactly what I did. I looked at that logo and got excited about Power Rangers. Um, so, yeah, I think um, I think it's great news, and I think actually, you know... A backdoor pilot in The Mandalorian is better than suddenly season three of The Mandalorian is about Ahsoka. I wouldn't mind that personally, but I think yeah. there's probably people out there that would. So, yeah, good, I mean, great on the, news on both accounts. The, the the day that Ahsoka episode of Mandalorian aired, the first one of the first things I put in the Discord, the Nothing But Static Discord, was I think they're setting up a spinoff rather than yeah it being about this. So I, I and I'm very relieved to see that's true. Um, and it also turns out, I've just Googled it just to check my facts, um, Gina Carano also getting in trouble for posting some election fraud claims and reposting stuff like that. So, yeah, fans are not happy. The idea that she's going to get a whole, potentially a whole Disney Plus series with her as the lead. Yeah, <laughs> so that's, that is unfortunate. Um, the other two hu- like huge pieces of news, and then we'll bunch the rest of the Star Wars announcements together, but the other two huge, sorry, the other two huge bits of Star Wars news uh, confirmation that the Obi Wan Kenobi series is happening, and then the additional news that they're bringing Hayden Christensen back is insane. And then the other massive one is that for Christmas 2023, we're going to be getting our next Star Wars movie um, titled Rogue Squadron, directed um, by the very brilliant um, director of uh, Wonder Woman, um, Patty Jenkins. Um, I, I mean. <sighs> Where do you start with any of that? Um, Hayden Christensen coming back, that's bonkers, because at this point, you assume it's going to be... It's its, it's post-Revenge of the Sith. It's it, The assumption is it's set between Revenge of the Sith and A New Hope, so he's Vader. So we'll barely see him, because he'll be in the suit, presumably. Yeah, I think um, Kathleen, Kennedy, Kathleen Kennedy specifically said Vader, not um, Anakin Skywalker. Yeah, but I'm so... so- I'm Why so thrilled by this. <laughs> oh no! But, well, hopefully, hopefully. Uh, look, he, I'm happy. Look, I'm happy for him because he seems like a nice guy, and he did the best with the shitty scripts and bad directing he had in those movies. I don't blame Hayden Christensen for fucking the sand speech or any of that nonsense. I, I think with a good director, I think he could be a very good actor, and I'm, I'm sure he's proven that in his other roles. I mean. I haven't seen a lot of his other stuff, but I'm sure he's a fine actor. But he's bonkers to bring him, go to the trouble of bringing him back for essentially he's going to be in just in the suit, right? Yeah, but hopefully, well, hopefully he won't be. Like it definitely, it definitely feels like there's more story between those two points, between Sith and Revenge of the Sith and uh, New Hope. And I kind of, I almost sort of want. Because it's been described as an epic rematch, and I, I kind of want bits of him not in the mask, and like you know, bits where Obi Wan's wondering whether he can be brought back, whether there is some humanity left, and uh, yeah, I think it's, uh, I think it's great. I, I suspect, I, I agree with you. I don't see the point in bringing him back if you're gonna hide him behind the mask. So my assumption is, yeah, and then stick James Earl Jones's voice mask. over him as well. Yeah, so hopefully they're not going to hide him behind the mask um, well, they could do something similar to what they did in rebels which is one of my favorite moments from rebels um which is when ahsoka finally came face to face with vader she is assu- so ahsoka assumed vader died in the in order 66 and in rebels she, sorry anakin i think i said vader she assumed anakin died in order 66 and then in rebels she comes across vader and senses him and the horror that ahsoka goes through realizing her old master her like her friend her confidant turned on the jedi and they have this amazing fight and she clips his mask with her lightsaber and it breaks uh like a section of the mask off so she can see his eye and when he talks because the voice changer is still in front of his face but also there's now a big hole in the mask it's both voices. It's Anakin's voice and Vader's voice simultaneously. It's oh, one of the most haunting good. moments from Rebels. And 
the way they play it from Ahsoka's perspective, realizing the true horror of what Anakin's become, is beautiful. And and it's a shame because no one really <laughs> Rebels is a reasonably popular show, but not in comparison to like what it should be for, for moments like that. And if you haven't seen that moment and you don't want to watch all the Rebels, just Google it. It's a great moment yeah. by Ahsoka <laughs> Vader. Just, I'm, I'm checking it, checking it out on mute as we speak. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's in, it's incredible, right? It's and it's and it's and when he talks and it's both voices, it's chilling to say the least. And 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 if they do something like that for Obi Wan, for the viewers who didn't check out Rebels, I know it's kind of like do, a magician doing the same trick twice, but I, it's such a good trick. I'll happily see it again. Do you know what I mean? So like, if they have a yeah, moment yeah. where Obi Wan and Anakin come face to face again, and that something like that happens where the mask gets half broken off yeah give me that please absolutely every day any day a hundred percent completely no yeah. completely um and and patty jenkins like we already sort of knew that but that's very exciting i can't wait to see what patty jenkins does yeah and it's interesting because rogue squadron not like the concept i really was that excited to see um i like rogue, I, rogue squadron are great they're you know but it's a, it's, it's going to be interesting to see patty jenkins do a do, do a Star Wars movie, but like such a specific one, like one about essentially you know dog fighting. Like it's gonna be, it's yeah, it's it's a, a war movie in a way that Star Wars generally isn't. They've never had one focused on the the piloting and the aerial combat before, and I think seeing that play out is gonna be really fascinating. Um, I also I also quite liked the way they did it. That I don't know if anyone's I don't know if you saw the video, Chris, that they announced this in, but it was Patty no. Jenkins talking about her connection to the military and her dad who um who was a fighter pilot that died um and her interest in fighter pilots and that level of speed and and then she ties that to the, her next project she wants to do so she's always wanted to do a movie in that realm you know about pilots and things and she says and this is cool. where my my interest in that is going to collide with another thing that i love and then she turns around uh, she puts on a like a like a rogue like a rogue one like a like rogue squadron helmet sorry um and then walks towards her and turns around and the camera follows her and it's a fucking x-wing she's walking towards and it ends there and it has the logo really cool video to reveal it um and 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 shows that there's a personal connection for her to this film that i didn't know previously know about um and it made me really excited because even though i couldn't give two fucks if they'd have announced a rogue squadron movie with just you know a director i wasn't too familiar with or didn't already know had made good stuff I would not be that excited about that, if I'm being honest with you. Um, mm. I, I don't know what you do with that that's interesting, but it feels like she's she already had an interesting movie in her head about pilots and is just applying it to Star Wars. And that is the approach they should be taking now with these Star Wars Yeah, movies. I agree. Don't start with Star Wars and then find an interesting story. Have an interesting story and then apply it to star wars like have the interesting story first that's why die hard with a vengeance is better than die hard 2 chris because it was an existing script about a cop doing a really interesting thing and they're like well why don't we just make that cop john mcclain and we'll call it a die hard sequel it was already an, an an interesting and worthy movie on its own merit before they made it a die hard sequel and that's exactly what they should start doing with these star wars movies have a good idea first then decide to make a Star Wars movie out of it. <laughs> I want to do that this Christmas. I haven't seen it. I've only seen the oh, first two. I want to watch the other Die Hard movie. I, it's it, the oh, the other one's not so <laughs> not so good. <laughs> it's yeah, wobbly, no. <laughs> wobbly from there. But I genuinely think the the, the second best Die Hard movie behind the first one is without a doubt the third one. It's brilliant. It's really good. It was originally a script called Simon Says, and it's such a unique concept. You watch it and you go, I understand why this was originally its own movie. It, it, it could have been easily. Um, I look, obviously, I, obviously, putting you know John McClane in it sells more tickets. <laughs> but yeah, I, I looked for a box set on Amazon and to add to my wish list for Christmas, and the mm. top result was a box set that didn't include the fifth movie. <laughs> and I was like, wow, that says a lot. It does say a lot. The fifth one's about the fourth one. I think was like a passable, like oh, it's kind of fun to see the character again. Not a great movie, but it's fine. It sort of serves its purpose. The fifth one, oh boy. Anyway, very off topic. So yeah, I don't know um, how much you knew about that other stuff with Patty Jenkins. Because um, if you didn't see that video, <laughs> sorry, I nipped, I sneezed. Then I don't know if you heard. <laughs> <But> I, <laughs> so I, I suddenly nipped away to because I don't have a tissue, so I had to like squeeze my nose with my hand, so my fingers. So I suddenly walked away, thinking you were talking to wash my hands. But two amazing things happened. Uh, I left the door open, and at that point, Jess flushed the loo. So, uh, 
not only was there a silence from me then, there was probably also an audible toilet flush. So I apologise for both Definitely of those. Definitely leaving that in. Jess apologises. <laughs> I'm going to step away to get a tissue and just wash my hands. Sure. Was that Jess shouting? I know. <laughs> yeah, it was just Jess shouting. Sorry, sorry, ah, sorry, Dan. It's fine. Listeners. No one cares. No one cares. It's fine. Right. So the um, look, I'll quickly run through some of the other news so we can get through this quicker. That's related to Star Wars, um, and then you can give your thoughts on them when we when you get back from blowing your nose, Chris. Um, so we also have announced the Acolyte, a TV series by the Russian doll showrunner uh, Leslie Hardland, which talks about the final days of the High Republic, which is presumably about 100 to 150 years before A New Hope. So this is earlier than we've ever been in a Star Wars thing. Um, We're getting Andor, the thing I'm least excited about, a show about Cassie and Andor from Rogue One. I don't care. Um, The Bad Batch, they gave us a new trailer for that, which is obviously the animated spin-off from Clone Wars, which we've already talked about on Nothing But Static, so we won't go into too much detail on that here, except that it looks good. Visions, which is animated shorts, just generally from the world of Star Wars. Uh, Lando, a series about Lando Calrissian that's in early development. Um, No Donald Glover, no Dan Doolan. I won't be watching... No, don't do it. Don't do it without Donald Glover. Don't make it at all if you can't get Donald Glover, is my advice there. Um, We also have a droid story, the animated special where a new droid is guided through the world of Star Wars by C-3PO and R2-D2. I think that's looking to be aimed at a bit more of a sort of kid-friendly audience. And then the sort of vague thing they added, but they didn't have any more detail on, is that there is an untitled Star Wars movie in development from Taika Waititi, presumably 2024, the Christmas after the Rogue Squadron movie. I... So, a few things. One, I, I think both Billy D. Williams and Donald, I want, I want Billy D. Williams going on some sort of adventure which makes him flash back to Donald Glover. Um, mainly Glover, really? but framed framed with, by Billy D. Williams. Yeah, man. Yeah, why not? That's what I, 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 reckon, I reckon I kind of want, like, Billy D. Williams as, like, <laughs> narrator. <laughs> yeah, well, that's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's whether you like, see Rather than not, actually yeah, being in it, I just, like... I, I want, like, a How I Met Your Mother style... And that was the time that I got into this trouble. <laughs> you know, I yeah, want Billy, uh, Billy, Billy yeah. D. Williams' amazing voice. Because I don't want the show to focus... I'm not interested in post... post uh, you know, uh, Rise of Skywalker, Lando, old, just pottering about. Uh, no, thank you. I want adventures. I want fun adventures. And I think focusing on the younger Lando is, is the way to go with this. Especially because they've set him up so well in Solo. It's like if it would be a... It would be crazy not to have him in the show, uh, you know, focus on him now. But hey, maybe that's... It would be nuts not to try. What, 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 what executive, when the option to reach out to Donald Glover is there, what executive would not take that? Um, well, yeah, but it's I, not. But the question isn't whether. The, 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 my question is why announce this before you've got Donald Glover on on thing? Because in my mind, if you don't get Donald Glover, you don't do this show. Um, uh, so to yeah. announce it prior to confirming Donald Glover, who is a busy man for many reasons, <laughs> um, yeah. is insanity. <laughs> yeah, no, that's fair. Um, the most of that stuff sounds exciting. I think it's a very clever move to focus on Disney Plus for Star Wars and make the movies feel like an event again um ryan johnson's trilogy was conspicuous in its absence uh, <laughs> but mm-hmm. there, there we go um, didn't you hear as, chris as, if, you, if you if you go woke you get broke ryan johnson is too like, too 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 much soy boy left-wing polit- politics in yeah. my star wars uh, disney put out a mandate didn't you hear chris disney had a mandate you can't can't get woke no more or you're gonna get broke because the real fans are gonna Take their money elsewhere, and you you'll still make a billion dollars. But don't worry about it. Get woke, get broke. It's amazing to me how Last Jedi is seen as a commercial failure. Like it literally it's, wasn't it's at all. And it's also that, that little you know me making fun of all the people that think that. Um, also applies to Marvel. Um, there was a bit, there was an article I read on a dodgy news website that literally claimed that Disney had a mandate that you couldn't do any more. Um, like left wingy politics, like um, yeah, stuff, uh, which is nonsense, which isn't true. And the well, reason was like, that apparently Disney had learned their lesson about not catering to the real fans, and had instead uh, mandated we can't have any more of this 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 woke left wing agenda stuff in our movies. Um, yeah, uh, but the, again, Disney just Captain announced Marvel. Captain exactly Captain Marvel two is exactly what I was just about to say is proof that but they're not, not only listening. That. Captain Marvel made over a billion dollars. As did but Last even Jedi. Then, it's insane. Even These then, people are people, crazy. 
even then people were like, oh, yeah, but Disney filled a lot of those theatres. Bullshit. Utter bullshit. Yeah, anyway. those people, the people um, who, cla- who are claiming that sort of thing are as deluded as the people claiming Donald Trump won the election, in my opinion. So <laughs> it's, so, just, but, it's just delusion in the face of all, lo- all evidence, all facts. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, um, so wh- while Ryan you Johnson's trilogy, talk about that, I'm going to quickly pop to the loo for a pee. I'm going to, if that's okay. Cool. Um, you yeah, so you can still hear me, yeah? Oh, yeah, I can still hear you, yeah. Yeah, Ryan. Yeah, Ryan Johnson's trilogy, conspicuous by its absence, um, as was Avatar as well. Like, which a few years ago was their tentpole. Every other Christmas, big Avatar movie, also conspicuous by its absence. Um, but just uh, yeah, the Star Wars things. I think it all sounds great. I think it's a very smart move, like I say, to make the movies an event thing again. And I think things like the a droid story sound like a lot of fun. Um, like uh, things like visions sound great. Like it's a real kind of pick and mix of what you're interested in um obviously leslie headland uh who show ran russian doll doing a tv series uh, is also very exciting um because russian doll was great so i think they're doing a lot of really smart things with star wars there's the danger of oversaturation uh in you know in the disney plus of it all in the way that you know people were worried about that happening with the movies but i think they've got you know you look at this list and everything either has an exciting premise or an exciting um, creative direction. Do you, do you know what I mean? So we know Ahsoka works. Uh, Obi-Wan having McGregor and Hayden is great. Patty Jenkins being involved. Leslie Headland, Like, they seem to be doing, making really smart decisions with the creative directions. And I think that's going to hopefully lead to a collection of material that is just really exciting. So I'm I'm pumped for Star Wars. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think you've summed that up nicely. I think it's, it's as, assuming that they're smart enough to space this stuff out, because most of the stuff I've just listed is, is, is Disney plus direct. Like uh, the Obi-Wan um, stuff, all that rogue, uh, except for rogue, except for rogue squadron and the Taika Waititi movie. The rest of it is all straight to Disney plus. Um, assuming they yeah. spread it out, there's two things that will help that from not feeling oversaturated. Step one, spread it out. Don't release it all in really close succession. I'm a little bit worried about Marvel oversaturation this year. We'll come to that. Um, spread it out, but also make everything different. Droid Story sounds like a sort of more of a kid's show. <laughs> As is yeah. kind of the Bad Batch. Bad Batch is going to sort of fill that Clone Wars vibe of a bit of both, right? Like it's going to satisfy the nerdy animation star wars fans the people who like clone wars and rebels um uh, you know are gonna really get a kick out of that um but it, it, i don't think the mandalorian viewers are gonna switch on bad batch do you know what i mean so yeah. that to them that won't feel like oversaturation even if they release them around the same time because it's 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 you know what i mean so assuming that they mm. the live action shows get spread out and the animated sh- shows get spread out, and the things that are different from each other get spread out. So they're not too. You don't want to put two things out too, that are too similar. So what you don't want to do, for example, is release Ahsoka or um, what's the other one that's uh, Rangers of the New Republic around a season of Mandalorian. Do you see what I mean? So it's it's about yeah. being smart about peppering the things that have the same tone as each other through so they're not together or near each other. If you do that, you won't oversaturate the market. Um, it, it, there's a real danger of that because there is so much stuff here, but a lot of this stuff it looks like is way down the line. I mean, the only thing they've even, they're even filming from the Star Wars stuff right now, other than the Mandalorian season three, which they've announced is happening Christmas next year, so around this time next year, um, which makes sense a year from when they're doing season one. Uh, sorry, season two. Um, the Obi Wan Kenobi show is in production as of January or February, and then the Ahsoka thing will start filming later in the year. So I mean, things like. Andor, the Acolyte, Lando, these are all a fair ways out. So it, the indications are they're spreading this stuff out quite thinly because not much of it is already filming. So it's like, you know, That's they've fair. set it up that, that way. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. And I think they're, I think they're being very smart with it. Yes. Should, should we move on to the Disney stuff? Yeah. Oh, so, so, so there's two ways we can do this, Chris. I can either run through this list now just top to bottom quickly, and then we'll just pick out the things we want to have. We have something to say about, or we can go through it point by point. I think the fastest way would be for me to just read it, and then we have a chat. Yeah, 
Yeah, because that... we don't have a lot. Let's only talk about the stuff we have stuff to say on. So, yeah, yeah. read okay. the list. Let, let me read you the list first, just so everyone knows what's going on. So, Willow, new se- uh, a series based on the, the, the movie Willow. Uh, Warwick Davis is returning. John M. Chu of, uh, I believe, Crazy Rich Asians. I think he's the director of that. Um, will be directing, I think, the pilot. Um, that is a big get. He's a very good director. Um, I'm just double checking. Yeah, Crazy Rich Asians and the upcoming In the Heights movie, which is uh, one of the movies that's going to be coming to uh, <laughs> HBO Max this year <laughs> um, as a result of the their new deal. Anyway, uh, Indiana Jones 5, a sequel with Harrison Ford returning and James Mangold directing. Uh, the Mighty Ducks Game Changers, a series following where the film's left off with Emilio Estevez back as Gordon Bombay. I, I cannot express how weird that is. Um, Hocus Pocus 2, the sequel to the classic 1993 Halloween film, which is in the last couple of years picked up an absurd and very strange following. I, I like that movie a lot. I watched that a lot as a kid. It'll come up one day on Rewind Reviews. Baffled. Um, Three Men and a Baby reboot starring Zac Efron for a 2022 release. Cheaper by the Dozen, a reimagining of the classic film with a blackish producer on board going straight to Disney Plus in 2022. Turner and Hooch, Josh Peck in the lead role of a Turner and Hooch reboot straight to Disney Plus. Um, and then we've, they've got some new IPs such as The Mysterious Benedict society which is a book adaptation starring tony hale from arrested development and Kristen Scholl from everything that's also going straight to disney plus uh they've got a film about high school basketball with john stamos and yvette nicole brown of community also going straight to disney plus they're doing a chippendales chippendale rescue rangers movie um starring andy sandberg and john mulaney it's going to be a live action animated hybrid and weirdly because i thought this would go to cinemas because you know chipmunks money but it's going straight to disney plus weird um pinocchio and peter pan the two big next disney you know animated remakes they're doing also going straight to disney plus pinocchio being directed by robert zemeckis with tom hanks playing geppetto and jude law playing captain hook in the peter pan and wendy movie all uh, both those straight to disney plus we're finally getting a sequel to one of my favorite disney movies ever enchanted um called disenchanted that's going straight to disney plus cannot fucking wait for that um sister act three is happening with guppy goldberg returning also straight to disney plus they've announced that raya the last dragon is um sadly in my opinion not going to be reaching theaters uh, it's also not going to be going the way of soul and just being put on disney plus for free it's going to be going on the mulan model of premier access which i thought they were shifting away from very sad to hear uh 5th of march on disney plus premier access um i'm excited about that one though um encanto a new movie with music written by lin-manuel miranda is um going to be their next film in cinemas um uh, over at disney it's a uh, uh, animated film i should say in cinemas november 2021 uh where are we got we got they've announced four uh, of tv shows based on the disney animated uh, movies uh baymax which is a big hero six series set for 2022 zootopia plus which is a series for 2022 tiana which is a spin-off um series from princess and the frog for 2022 moana for 2023 and then they've got a new ip um called iwaju um, which is a new series which looks interesting but I don't know a lot about it they've not revealed much about it yet that's also set for 2022 then they're doing some car, uh, not cars uh, Pixar series Doug Days which is a spin-off from Up um, starring you know Doug the Dog from Up uh, for fall 2021 an untitled Cars series following Lightning McQueen and Meta going on a road trip in fall 2022 uh, Win or Lose which is a new Pixar property brand new not a spin-off from a film that's fall 2023 so it looks like it looks like Pixar are putting out one series a year for Disney Plus now. So it's Doug Days, the car series, then the brand new one. Then there's a new Pixar film heading to theaters in June this year. That'll be the next Pixar film that actually hits cinemas, obviously, with Soul going straight to Disney Plus, uh, called Luca. Um, I don't know a lot about that, but that's that's the thing that's in development. And then the last bit of Disney news before we get to like the FX or Marvel stuff, um, they're doing a movie called Lightyear, which is telling the fictional backstory of the real, in quote marks, Buzz Lightyear, no longer voiced by Tim Allen, but instead Chris Evans. And that's due for June 2022, which means that's been in development or production for about two years already. Uh, there was a screenshot from that also available. Take a breath. Well, that is insane. What is happening, Chris? Explain. It's nuts. <laughs> so it's just nuts. So let's let's talk about the ones that we... Because uh, so... I mean, this one isn't nuts, but it is quite. I, I, I'll be honest with you. I've only seen one Indiana Jones film. Um, but well, James please tell Mangle- me it's not Crystal Skull. No, 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 no. It's. Uh, I think it's the first one. I think it's Raiders. Raiders. Um, Good. But uh, Mango Mangold directing made me go. 
Oh, I should probably catch up on Indiana Jones to, to yes. watch that because I think that's like that's a great choice. Um, yes. And haven't they confirmed it will be Harrison Ford's last outing as Indiana yes. Jones? I think as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that's really well, yeah. Exciting. Because well, yeah, that has to be the case though. Because if it isn't Indiana Jones, uh, Harrison Ford's last outing as Indiana Jones, what are they going to do? Indiana Jones and the Temple of the Last Bloody Stairlift. What like just him going around with a Zimmer frame? Like at what point does poor Harrison Ford, who is you know, a very healthy man, but aging like all human beings do. How much more jumping around with a whip can he do before he dies? Do you know what he I mean? Kicked, yeah, I've heard a lot of people say that he kicked a fair amount of arse in Blade Runner 2049. Like, yeah, I'm not he saying he isn't capable now, but this is a movie they're making now to come out in a few years' time. Yeah. yeah. What, another three or four years after that, we expect him to still be doing it. It's, it's, it's on the edge now. I mean, look, again, he's a very, he's a healthy guy. He's a, he's clearly in good shape for his age. I'm not questioning that, but age is still a factor. It's got to be, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah uh, that's and, fair. and and considering James Mangold's history with doing movies about aging heroes, particularly looking at Logan. Mm. Um that's a that I think there's a reason Mangold has been intrigued by this. The I think he's going to play up Indy's age in this one. It's not going to be like the last one where they were pretending that he was still a young man despite visibly not being. I think they're genuinely going to kind of make this look like uh, uh, they're going to make this his last outing story-wise too. Like they're going to very clearly show that he's aging out of this role. Yeah, and that's probably, I imagine that's the kind of thing that appeals to Harrison Ford. Like, aren't the rumours that when Star Wars was coming back, Harrison Ford was like, I'll do it if you kill if you kill the character. Yeah, but he always says that. He wanted them to kill um, Han Solo in Empire Strikes Back when he was a young man. Yeah. So he's, he, yeah, just, he just doesn't want to commit to franchises. He's like, look, kill me soon. <laughs> well, this is the fifth film. He's fairly committed already. Yeah, um, that's true. It's, it's, but what? What's what? I think what's amazing. There's so many projects projects on this list that are like, who's asking for this? Like <laughs> the Three Men and a Baby reboot. The cheap. The thing I love about Cheaper by the Dozen is the way they describe it as the reimagining reimagining of the classic film. Like completely ignoring the fact that they've already remade Cheaper by the Dozen once with I think Steve Martin, wasn't it? And they, I think they did two of those films. Like. But even those the wasn't that the original. Hu- that's that's the only Chief Brother doesn't I'm aware of. The Steve Martin ones. No, it was like a 1950s sort of uh, film. Oh, is it? I oh, I didn't even know that. Yeah, yeah. It's like like that was a remake. So hold on. Yeah, so yeah, that was, was 2003. Yeah, 1950. yeah I've just pulled yeah, it up. 1950 film with the same same name. But the, I mean, I, when I think of Chief Brother doesn't I'm, I? I assume what they're remaking is the the, the Steve Martin film. <laughs> no, <laughs> but when they when they say reimagining of the classic film i don't think they mean the steve martin one do you i don't know well, i don't know how good the the, the the other film is i can't imagine it's on a it's any better. i wouldn't describe the 2003 steve martin one as a classic would you yeah there's <laughs> a lot of movies on here i wouldn't describe as being a classic chris <laughs> yeah that's true like again, i enjoyed i enjoyed turner baby. and hooch as a child i can't imagine that holds up why is josh peck doing that? Uh, i have no idea <laughs> T- turner and hooch like who Who's asking? But those three in particular, like, I, I see what, like, Hocus Pocus and the Mighty Ducks have a sort of cultish following. Yes, like, they do. I, Hocus I, Pocus I particularly, I said to Nadia about six months ago, I reckon the, the time is right for a Hocus Pocus sequel because I was seeing, you, you can see the fandom. Ta- they're tangible, they're everywhere. Like, it, it, Hocus Pocus comes up so often now. I see it on my Instagram and Twitter feeds all the time, particularly around Halloween, obviously. But like, it's it's definitely built up a real cult status. Um, and the Mighty Ducks is obviously just eternal. Like, the Mighty Ducks will never be not be a thing, you know. So, like, yeah, and if, fair, that and isn't that isn't them d- dusting off an old thing. That's them just continuing a thing that's just never seems to have gone away. <laughs> you do wonder, like, how many of these? I'd love to know how many of these are partly inspired by disney plus stats do you know what i mean is is there a disney right. plus executive going hocus pocus gets viewed a lot guys we should consider doing something oh, with this you're property a, you're, a, you're a smart man aren't you chris you're absolutely right i wonder is this a reflection of of the back catalog are these movies a reflection on what's getting views on disney plus did a lot of people go back and watch three men and a baby chief by the dozen turner and hooch as in Chief by the Dozen, the, the Steve Martin one, the, you know, and, and, and Mighty Ducks and Hocus Pocus on Disney Plus when it launched. And they've just gone, well, they're, they're, we know 
there's that's where our demand is you know um oh, that's a fascinating thought that never occurred to me and that's i feel embarrassed that that never occurred to me because that is really smart you're right that's probably what that, that, how else do you explain this uh, you're right that's exactly gotta be it i can't think of any other reason they're bringing back all this random shite <laughs> well i don't know is three men and a baby on disney plus uh let me yeah it must be look there. yeah yeah it is on yeah yeah it's just, yeah, it's crazy. And But the, some of the things that are interesting about... So, like, I agree with you. Chippendale Rescue Rangers, uh, Sandberg and Mulaney alone, the fact that that's going straight to Disney+, Plus, and the fact yeah. that something like Sister Act 3, and actually the, the biggest one for me is Disenchanted. The fact that Disenchanted yes. isn't going to cinemas is like, oh, shit, like, really? Well, even Jude Law is capped. It, it really is, like, because it's funny, because I've seen Disney+, Plus get a lot of praise... Um, quite rightly, for not not um, not squeezing cinema a little bit more. So basically, a lot of people were praising them for not HB. One of the criticisms of HBO Max has been, and you and I, you and I have already discussed this, and don't particularly agree with them. But a lot of people I've heard say, "Why didn't they say six months? Why did they write off the whole year?" And as you said in the last in the last episode nothing but static the reason for that is they can just move the slate around like and then push cinema releases to the following year anyway yeah and anything and anything people... they want to not if, if if cinema picks up as the year goes on all they've got to do is push matrix back two months and it's suddenly in 2022 yeah, exactly. and no longer the way they phrased it was not to commit to any specific movie just the 2021 releases so if anything looks like yeah. it's gonna it's picking up they just push it back to 2022 and it's no longer gonna do that you know i, I don't know any other reason to explain why they didn't specifically name films yeah so i i don't think though that like when you look at this list Yes. I don't think the fact that Disney didn't say Black Widow's going straight to Disney Plus is them protecting cinemas. Because if you look at this list, Sister Act 3, Disenchanted, Mm -hmm. Jude Law as Captain Hook, Sandberg and Mulaney doing a Chippendale movie, there's a lot of mid... They are sort of suggesting that cinema is going to be for the big Hollywood blockbusters of Black yes. Widow and a Patty Jenkins Star Wars movie. There is there is some slight trouble for cinema in this announcement in yes. that you've got the mid-range films like your sister acts, your Disenchanted, yes. which I would argue isn't a mid-range film, by the no, way. No, and I would also have to, I would make the same argument for Chippendale because as much as Chippendale is a bit of a lost franchise and a bit of an odd pick... When you look at the success like the Chipmunks movies had, you know, yeah. the Smurfs movies, you know, those sort of live action CGI character or animated character hi- hybrid movies, they find a really big family audience every time. Those are pretty much free money. They do well regardless. You know, you put a couple, you put a hundred or 200 mil, uh, not 200 mil, you put a hundred mil into one of those or 50 mil, whatever, uh, and you're going to get a profit. You don't need to do a lot to get profit on those. They're, they're fairly safe business. The fact that's going to Disney Plus is madness to me. With, and the same with Disenchanted, which I assume the original Enchanted. Let me check out how much money did the original Enchanted make? Was it was it one of those movies that kind of initially flopped and found an audience later? I'm going to look that up while you, while you talk. So I yeah sure so I I just I feel like there is some damage to cinema here because yes cinemas do also need those movies and really the only sort of cinema ones are Pinocchio with which is Zemeckis and Tom Hanks so yeah. you know yes some Tom Hanks movies have flopped but that that suggests blockbuster um obviously Black Widow Buzz Lightyear, huge Toy Story franchise is huge, and Chris Evans. We will come back to that because it does sound fucking mental. Mm-hmm. Um, but like, there's, there's all, all the big blockbusters they're doing to the cinema. Yeah. They're going to the cinema, but you've got these mid-range movies that are going straight to Disney Plus, which, which is damaging to the cinema. So whilst they didn't do what HBO Max, HBO Max did, mm-hmm. I don't think there's anything to suggest here that Disney is. Them, and to be fair, I think Bob Iger in the presentation even said cinema was the backbone of what they're doing. Well, is it? Because Doesn't look like it, does it? <laughs> you've you've got Jude Law playing Captain Hook going straight to Disney Plus. So, yeah. yeah. 
So um, the um, budget for Enchanted was eighty five million, and the rule of thumb for marketing is double that for the total cost. So what's uh, eighty five mil times two is what's one hundred seventy mil. million. So one hundred seventy yeah. mil spent on it, it made three hundred forty worldwide. Okay. So it was a success. So yeah, I mean that made them and that, it picked up that, steam that, after. That's, that's profit, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, and it picked up steam after. Um, let's yeah. talk. Uh, let's let's talk about uh, this Buzz Lightyear thing. <laughs> <laughs> you because... you. I've never known anybody. That, I mean, I, I've never known anybody have such like. <laughs> you're, you're, you're. I mean, a lot of people have strong opinions on this. You really have strong opinions on this. <laughs> I on. just think it's. I just think it's fucking weird and i don't and look while, while you I, talk I, as, assuming i can still hear you do you mind me popping out to go pour more water i'm out of liquids we've been recording for so long yeah no that's fine yeah i think. i think the thing is like and and obviously i'm well aware and we've you know we've made watchman and toy story 4 are our go-to's for you know you shouldn't remake you shouldn't do sequels to a story that was perfectly capped and i i loved toy story 4 potentially my potentially one of my favorite if not my one of my favorite movies of that year this could work this could be brilliant chris evans i don't think would be involved unless he was he saw something in the script the pitch whatever but it's just fucking weird because like what's the framing of it so it's not the toy it's based on the character but was the the toy seemed to be the character seemed to be invented for the toys in the Toy Story movies. And how do you do a Toy Story subset movie with? Is it going to miss the Toy Story of it all? Like it's just weird. Like and the fact it's weird, man. This is a weird pitch. I, I, I'm I'm uh, I'm back at the mic. Um, one thing that I think is re- really weird about this for me is they keep referring to it as the real Buzz Lightyear, and the picture is a lot more sort of like a photorealistic human being than mm. than 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 the, obviously the, the the toy from the movie Toy Story. So I can't work out if this is one of two things. Is this Buzz Lightyear of Star Command, which was an animated show that they did a few years ago that was basically the show the toy is supposed to, that's come along. You know how like in the old days like a TV show came along with a toy. So, you know, you had yeah, He-Man, yeah. you had your Transformers. Buzz Lightyear of Star Command as a TV series was kind of framed as the show that came along with the Buzz Lightyear toy, right? Mm. But they keep referring to this as the real Buzz Lightyear. So now my question becomes, in the world of Toy Story, is the Buzz Lightyear toy and the animated series Buzz Lightyear of Star Command based on a real man... In which case, are you telling me that in the world of Toy Story, there's an astronaut that went out and fought a guy called Zerg? Because that seems pretty fucking weird. <laughs> so is it, what, is it a like, fictional backstory for a character that exists and has inspired a toy? Or is there, a, in the world of Toy Story, is there a real man called Buzz Lightyear that's an astronaut? In which case, that's not going to be that exciting a movie. <laughs> It's so weird, like, yeah. <laughs> and is because because it, it also brings up loads of existential question existential questions about you know what I mean the creation of the toys and like Toy Story should you shouldn't think too hard about that sort of stuff with Toy Story because it falls apart. Like, yeah. <laughs> so, and looking at the picture, yeah. he's wearing like quite a realistic looking spacesuit. So I think this really is a movie about a real man that existed that inspired the TV shows and the toys. But that's in itself pretty strange. And this, as far as I can tell, is going to cinemas. <laughs> like... Yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. weird. Yeah. I mean, I, I have mixed feelings on it. But like you, as you pointed out, like, you know, we've, we've been, we've had suspe- we've had concerns about things that have turned out great. I mean, what was your example? Watchmen and, well, the last, the well, most. Toy Story the, the clo- 4. Yeah, like, Toy Story 4 is the last example, isn't it? We had, we both had reservations li- about them doing that and it turned out great. So. <laughs> literally one of my complaints for this is leave Toy Story alone. But that was my complaint at the fact that they were even doing Toy Story 4. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. Um, so that's and the, and the other Disney. the other blow for c- cinema, by the way, that we didn't talk about when you were talking about how this hurts cinema. Raya the Last Dragon was going to be the next big Disney animated movie. They've already put Soul on streaming. Sending Raya that way is 
unfortunate. Um, and I don't think there's much to be said for all the Disney and Pixar shows. You know, Baymax, Zootopia, Moana, um, Doug Days, uh, Luca. All of those... Oh, no, Luca's the new film that's going into things. Sorry, not that one. Um, I think it's weird. Some of those do not, to me, scream that they need a TV series. Just to, just to quickly touch on those so we've not completely ignored them. Moana, that film feels very complete. I don't need a mm-hmm. Moana TV series. Baymax, on the other hand, it's a superhero movie. More of Baymax fighting whatever threat happens to exist. I'm sure. Um, Zootopia, there's a crime show in that, you know, so crime of the week sort of thing. Great. Yeah. I'm well up for that. Um, I think there might be more stories to tell with Tiana as well from The Princess and the Frog. Um, and obviously, it's always great to get more representation a- amongst this stuff. The Moana one really confuses me because that movie is so closed. It's such a. I just, just her off on adventures with Maui? I, I don't know what, whether I want that. <laughs> I, I, I don't know whether anyone yeah. wants that, is my, is my thing. But there you go. So just, just so we didn't completely skip over the, the, the TV series they announced going to Disney Plus for kids as well. Um, I'll definitely watch... I think the Zootopia one is the one I'm most excited about because I think that's got the most potential. Like a week-to-week just solving crimes in Zootopia slash Zootropolis, depending on what country you saw it in. Um, uh, yeah, I think there's potentially a, a good... A good film yeah, of, of of the films those are based on, I've only seen uh, Zootopia. Apart from obviously Doug Days, I've seen Up um, mm-hmm. and Zootopia. I mean, Zootopia is brilliant, or Zootropolis, yes. like you say. So I think, yeah, that's going to be uh, that. I am excited about. I think that's yeah. going to be really good. How? But how do you feel about the the general? And this is very much applicable to Marvel as well. Uh-huh. The the general premise now that you know. If a film is successful, you're going to get a film, you're going to get a TV series, you're going to get, you know, engaging with all the content of a thing you love is going to require subscriptions. And, uh, you know, how do you feel about the the, the true kind of franchising of, of any property? Yeah, I think it's, well, from my perspective as a consumer, I think it for me, it's just the natural evolution of, tv and films merging because when uh, you know mm. i've i've grown up i grew up in a time where tv actors did not get to appear in movies and movie actors did not stoop to the level of tv yeah. because tv budgets were so low and it was just like that was the cheap shitty entertainment that you had on in your home but then you went to the cinema for the big budget stuff the good stuff um and i think this is just the next step in those worlds colliding the the the, the line continues to blur between television and film um, we recently, on the last episode of the Mustanic, reviewed the third day, right? Which to me had the production quality that could have easily been that of a film, right? Like the visuals mm. and the the acting, Jude Law and stuff. That could have, that they could have made a film out of that, no problem. Uh, and it'd have pro- probably been a really good, like solid sort of uh, folk horror. Um, uh, I mean, it would have been mid tier budget wise, obviously. But like, you look at the Mandalorian. That's a that's a movie every week. Like, <laughs> so th- this. I'm not looking at this as a move for franchising, but more as a move to just say, well, they're one in the same now. If you have a story that you, that that, you, that needs to be told an hour and a half, you do a movie. If your story needs more time, do it as a series. It doesn't really matter. Um, and, and in terms of franchising and the interconnectivity, particularly doing spin-offs of existing movies, well, that's how you start, isn't it? You can notice Pixar's platform for their ones. 2021, Dog Days. 2022, Cars. Um, 2023, Win or lose, which is a brand new IP. Do you yeah. notice that trend? This is mm. see, we can do it, and we'll do it with the safe, happy franchise names that you know and love, and we'll come to, and then we'll drop something original. And this look at look at what's happening with the, the, the with the Marvel ones. We got Wonder Vision, Falcon, Winter Soldier, Loki. These are all characters you know and love. Ms. Marvel, She Hulk, Moon Knight. These are not characters you're familiar with. They're yeah, well, all, I mean, the pattern is is there in the same universe, obviously. So they are part of the same franchise. But from a from a from a perspective of a consumer, it's like here's the thing you know. We're going to use that to start bridging that gap between your movies and your TV content, and then we're going to start doing new and interesting things with it. So I'm not too worried and about that's it. A- that's a pattern that both Pixar and Marvel have been following in the movies. Like you look at yes. Pixar movies, like, like I've got this here: Finding Dory sequel, Cars three sequel, Coco new, Incredibles two sequel, Toy Story four sequel, Onward new. Do you know what I mean? Like yes. so, actually, in terms of the films, like Light Years, they're 
like Luca and Soul are both original properties, aren't they? So they're, yeah. yeah. But so uh, yeah, so I'm looking I think for. I'm looking forward to Soul. Testing. I think Soul's going to be. I think Soul's going to be really good. I'm convinced. Yeah, Soul looks great. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so I, 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 in terms of your wider question about my, how am I worried about this? I, I, there's always room for franchising. There's always room for interconnected storytelling. Um, I don't feel like as long as they don't make it essential viewing, so that people who people can choose not to be financially dependent on Disney hooking them like bad drug dealers on the good stuff and then giving them shite for a higher cost. As long as we, as long as there's a quality to everything, and it's optional. And not I don't want to see a movie in the theaters that you need to have seen a series to watch. Mm. That's that's when we're getting into shitty business practices. Yeah, but and we might. Some of the Marvel suggestions might indicate that. Depends how it depends. Uh, that's gonna per, that's gonna come down to execution. If execution. if they cover what they need to cover in the movie to catch you up on what happened in the series in a way that doesn't make you feel like you've missed out, I'm okay with it. Yeah, completely. I don't mind them being interconnected as long as I can sit down to watch Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness without having seen uh, WandaVision. Uh, and that's not because I personally won't be watching WandaVision. Of course I fucking will. But I don't, f- I don't like the idea that kids who watch these Marvel movies in the cinemas also now need a Disney Plus subscription. Um, I, I think yes, it, should I be a, it's, it should be a thing that they c- can, can get as a nice bonus with extra content and these very impressive series that look really good but they shouldn't need that um yeah, but bef- before we get to the marvel stuff very quickly just to get you on a couple of fx uh com- confirmations they gave us during that night um it's always sunny has been renewed for four new seasons making it the longest running live action sitcom in history uh they're doing an alien series being held by noah hawley um of uh of uh fargo and what was that Legion, that uh, that other FX series, Legion for X Men fame? He's an amazing writer. Uh, Ridley Scott is currently in negotiation in negotiations to be a producer, and it will be the first Alien story to take place on Earth, inspired by the very uh, first Alien film and its sequel, Alien. So expect it to be a horror based film, uh, horror based show. Cannot wait. Uh, Reservation Dogs, a half hour comedy. Uh, about four Native American teenagers growing up in Oklahoma from Taika Waititi and um, a guy called Sterling Har- Harjo? Har- Harlow? I can't, I, can't, it's, I can't 100% pronounce that. I'm going to say Harjo and, and apologize for mispronouncing it. Um, it. He is a Native American that lived in, grew up in Oklahoma. So I assume this is very much Sterling's premise and show and it's going to be autobiographical. Sounds good to me. They're finally, let's say finally, they're adapting uh, Shogun as well. Uh, they've got some you know, Game of Thrones producers and stuff pulling together. This is going to be one of those, like, I reckon, like a big budget sword and sandals deal, but with samurai. Um, well, Shogun specifically. Um, yeah, so that Shogun looks like it could be a potentially very big series for FX as well. Um, again, based on the 1975 novel. So there you go. That's the FX stuff. Anything? Any thoughts on that? No, Chris? all of them. All of them sound great. Like the, yeah. you know, I, I'll take anything from Taika Waititi. Full, you know, full yeah. stop. I think doing an alien story, but literally referencing the first two movies as your, as your kind of jumping off point and starting, you know, premise mm-hmm. is is great. I think that's the most sensible thing to do with that franchise. Mm-hmm. Um, and good on it's always sunny. Like <laughs> just incredible, like, right? Such a such an untouchable uh, series, and and fair play to them. They work, they work hard on that, and they've mm-hmm. uh, they've created something with you know real consistency and stuff. So yeah, yeah. And with fair the play. alien thing, the idea of them setting it on Earth like really excites me. The idea that it's going to be like future Earth, one alien might land, and then facehuggers might start going everywhere. And as the series goes, it'll build, and then it could literally be humanity versus the xenomorphs. I mean, that's. Oh. That's mouthwateringly exciting as a, as an idea for a series. So yeah, very excited for that. Yeah, definitely. So, shall I do for Disney what we did for Marvel? Uh, sorry, shall I do for Marvel what I did for the general Disney stuff and just list everything first, and then we can pick out the stuff we want to talk about? Or do you want to go through it point by point? No, I think I think do that because a lot of it, you know, we we've, we've talked about Hawkeye, we've talked about right She sure. Hulk and Moon okay. Knight. So yeah, okay. I think I think do go that. through the list. Okay, deep breath first. 
We have WandaVision, which is confirmed for January the 15th, and they gave us a brand new trailer. We had Falcon of the Winter Soldier, which is now confirmed for March 19th with a brand new trailer. Uh, Black Widow, is they've announced, is still aiming for theatres, will not be coming to Disney+, Plus, and the new date for that is May the 7th. Loki now has a, re- a release window of May and a brand new trailer. What If has been given the summer release window and also gave us a brand new trailer. Fuck, it looked awesome. Um, weirdly, Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings is keeping its original planned release date of July the 9th this year which now pushes it ahead of eternals which has been pushed back a full year to november 5th so it will no longer go black widow eternal shang chi but black widow shang chi eternals very interesting choice we'll come back to it uh miss marvel late 2021 now they've now confirmed the man uh, villani casting as kamala khan uh, it was previously reported but now they've confirmed it they've also finally fuck me disney what were you doing confirmed Haley steinfeld as kate bishop for hawkeye which has now been put as a late uh, sorry an early 2022 show she hulk they have finally confirmed uh tatiana uh, maslani as the lead uh, they've also uh, slipped in some extra information which really Blew, blew Chris's my mind, which is that Tim Roth is back as Abomination, and Mark, Ruff- Mark Ruffalo himself will be appearing. They've kind of hinted that one's going to be more of a comedy, and I think that's an interesting approach. Uh, they have also got um, Moon Knight on the schedule. They mentioned it, but they didn't give us any new details or a date or release window. Then they announced a bunch of new shows, including Secret Invasion, a new series following the Skrull Invasion, something we actually talked about in a previous episode recently um, as being a movie. They've decided to do it as a show with Nick Fury and Talos teaming up to deal with a Skrull Invasion on Earth. Lots of room for cameos. Uh, They've done Ironheart, which is something I think I predicted on one of our most recent podcasts as something they were aiming for with like a Young Avengers lineup. Um, Felt very pleased when they announced that. I felt felt super smart, (laughs) even though I'm a dummy. Um, uh, Riri Williams uh, becomes sort of a, a female iron man and they've cast dominique thorne as the as the lead uh we've got a war war machine series called armor wars um where it's going to have war machine retrieving tech that's fallen into the wrong hands we've got i am groot a series of baby groot related shorts i assume um they're going to be primarily cg animated shorts they're going to look photo real like in the movie but because it's all purely dealing with baby Groot, I don't know if we'll see a lot of like live action elements to that. Uh, we have Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. That's been announced to be coming in uh, 2022, March 25th, and will connect to Spider-Man 3, they've confirmed, which, again, hinting at the uh, Spider-Man 3 being a multiverse, uh, Spider-Verse sort of story. Uh, Thor Love and Thunder is now confirmed for May 6, 2022, just after that, with Christian Bale now officially being cast as Gore the God Butcher, which is awesome uh black panther 2 is still on the cards for july 8th uh, 2022 uh obviously they're not going to recast chadwick boseman they confirmed that and it's going to deal with other uh characters from the world of wakanda and it will of course be directed by ryan coogler as we already were aware captain marvel 2 is officially uh on the slate now i don't think it was after the last set of announcements i think they missed it off it was one of those weirdly inconspicuous ones um so it's november uh 2022 they've hired uh, nina da costa to direct it who i believe has done that new Candyman movie that looks amazing. Um, so I'm very excited that she's going to be directing it. Um, they've also confirmed that Iman uh, Vellani, who's playing Miss Marvel in the show, um, and uh, the actress they've hired, whose name I've not got in front of me, which is a shame, to play Monica Rambeau in WandaVision, are both going to be in that series. So a nice, strong female-led cast and a female director. Very excited about that. They've also announced a Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special for the holiday 2022, which will presumably lead into or set up and will definitely be shot alongside i think james gunn confirmed that this morning on his instagram um guardians of the galaxy volume 3 which is currently slated with no specific date but a year of 2023 so that will be after the holiday special they've then to finish up they've announced Ant- ant-man and the wasp quantum mania uh peyton reed returning no date but they've hired katherine newton um to play an, uh, a grown-up or a more grown-up version of cassie lang and jonathan majors is playing the villain kang the conqueror um, kind of amazed we're seeing Kang the Conqueror on screen very happy about that they mentioned Blade but gave no new info other than that they reconfirmed Mahershala Ali is cast in the lead role and then the final thing they announced which blew a lot of people's minds that they are doing a Fantastic Four movie it's in development no date at present but they have announced the director which is going to be Spider-Man Homecoming's John Watts <sighs> breathing it's good I like breathing lots of stuff Why, to talk uh... about there why does Disney hate Tim Blake Nelson? It's a question I heard asked on a YouTube thing. And I think it's, well, you know what I mean? Like, so for those that don't, for those that are like, huh? 
Um, Tim Blake Nelson played the scientist that they set up as a future villain in The Incredible Hulk. Um, but we're returning to Tim Roth. Mm. Did wonder. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think that, I mean, so much of that sounds awesome, doesn't it? Like, uh, so much of it sounds amazing. Um, I love, like, we, do you, it's just so, okay, so some key things that I love. Uh, I love that we're just having a lot of fun. Ant-Man and the Wasp, quantum mania. Fantastic. <laughs> yes. Um, I, I really like Catherine Newton as an actress. Part of me is wondering, like, they they had an older Cassie Lang in Endgame. Like I'm surprised they're not bringing that actress back. But okay, um, I think the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special sounds like a whole lot of fun. I love mm-hmm. John Watts, uh, who, as you said, did the Spider Man movies. Has done is doing the Spider Man movies, uh, mm-hmm. directing Fantastic Four. I love Armor Wars because Armor Wars feels like you and me sitting round as kids playing with Marvel toys. Going, oh, what could they do with more War Machine? Oh, maybe maybe Iron Man's armor falls into the wrong hands and War Machine has to save the day. Yeah, like it just literally feels like <laughs> they went. We need something for Don for for Cheadle for Don Cheadle. What about this? Yeah, that'll do. Like, and that's I love that. <laughs> like, that's just it's just amazing that we're in that world. Yes. Um, Secret Invasion as a series blew our minds. Like, it, there's there's a lot of great stuff here, and I feel like. The way, uh, how do you top end game? You just have fun. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, we've mm-hmm. we've talked about that before, and I think just just having fun and z- fleshing out characters is a is a really exciting thing to be doing. And the idea of like introducing a character in a in a TV series and then throwing them into a movie, really, for me, like a really strong move i think it's it gives you the ability to put some of these characters so you remember you remember the phase one when sort of hawkeye just sort of shows up and black widow just sort of shows up they would have benefited i think if they'd have had a series first obviously disney didn't have the platform for that back at the time or the money yeah. to throw at those sort of things but imagine a world where when we saw black widow show up in iron man it wasn't the first time we'd seen black widow you know we, we she'd already had a like a series or a movie of her own you know um same with Hawkeye showing up. Well, he showed up first in Thor, didn't he? Briefly. Um, Very. You know, briefly, imagine yeah. if he'd have. Imagine if he'd have had some sort of series first. Um, I think that would have been really cool. Um, and while those characters, obviously, that you know, that ship has sailed. Those characters exist now. Black Widow getting her own movie. Hawkeye about to get his own show where he sets up a, a new Hawkeye, Kate Bishop. Um, I think we're in a world where, though, you know, Miss Marvel, She Hulk, Moon Knight, Iron Heart. If you don't think they're going to end up in movies at some point, but I think you're sadly mistaken. <laughs> I think mm. that's I think uh, I think that's exactly what they're setting up here. Yeah, and, and you know, and, you... and the hint at that is the fact that uh, Ms. Marvel, uh, Amala Avalani's uh, character from the Ms. Marvel show, is is going to be in Captain Marvel too. That's a, that's a, that announcement confirms that alone. I think. And that... well. Go on, sorry. That in a way, if you did want to go down the big spectacle route of topping Endgame. You know what was the what was the one thing that people said wasn't in Endgame that could have topped that the the at the time the defenders turning up this is your equivalent of that you know what I mean yeah. everyone from these TV shows being in a battle um, and but just the 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 caliber of names as well like Oscar Isaac's uh, you know Haley Stan um, Stan Steinfeld mm-hmm. like just such incredible casting appearing throughout and i just i love the notion as well that everyone everyone apart from the two cat the three characters because obviously you know black widow was meant to be out by now so i include her in that mm-hmm. the th- everyone apart from the three characters whose stories got ended in endgame is continuing in some some form either a sequel movie a tv show etc like mm-hmm. there's no one uh, that i as far as you know that i can think of there's no, even there's rumours of, I, in fact, I can't remember if it's been confirmed or not, that um, the uh, the actress who played Lady Sith might be in Thor 4 and might be in Loki. Like, like literally, there's mm. not really people getting left out unless it's, you know, yeah. the actor's choice. So I think it's, uh, I think it's great. It's a fan's dream, <laughs> like. It is, and, and, and I think it, 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 there's a discussion here about oversaturation, 
um, I am a little worried because it's looking like you know, I mean, twenty twenty one is looking messy for Marvel. It's like it's One Division, Falcon and Soldier, Black Widow, Loki, What If, Shang Chi, Legends, Ten Rings, Eternals, and Ms. Marvel all this year. That's a lot of stuff. <laughs> That's that is. But I wonder. Yeah. I, I wonder whether because I assume they're gonna they'd be fools not to do the Mandalorian release model of week to week. Mm-hmm. I wonder whether. You know, if you because it's well, I mean, yeah, it looks like one division is going to lead. It looks like one division is going to pretty much lead straight into Falcon and Winter Soldier by the dates. I can, I'll do yeah, and exactly, and now. because it's leading, like I don't know if it's actually. Well, you look at it as, as a list like this, but if you think about like, so what are we actually? We're getting the two, three, four. We're getting some of like five or so TV shows and like three movies or whatever. I think especially mm. because we've had a break. I don't feel it will fit. I don't think in execution it will feel as much oversaturation as it as it looks on paper. Right. Yeah. So, um, because um, so... you know, you how much TV do we watch? Do you know what I mean? Just you know, it's the TV shows. It's a lot, but we've reviewed more than that in episodes before. Do you, do you know what I mean? Like so. Mm. Yeah, I'm hoping it doesn't feel like that. The main thing I hope for though is good quality throughout and you know Loki, the trailer the new trailers for loki and falcon and winter soldier like they looked great they looked awesome so yeah, yeah. i'm still i'm it's still open. not sold on falcon and winter soldier i was just like yeah it looks fine I'm, I'm 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 maybe i'm a weirdo in that sense maybe everyone else is super pumped but i mean it looks like no, i think exactly... everyone no, every, I, I think everyone else is in the exact middle ground between you and i like because you're like meh whatever whereas i just really like those characters and i'm like yeah. yep um, and I think everyone else is like, yeah, cool. Like, yeah, it's it's ex- uh, exactly a month between the two because um, there's only six episodes for uh, one, one division, and um, yeah. if if they start on 15th of January, they would end on the 19th of February, and then it's exactly four weeks later, Friday the 19th of March, um, that the Falcon and Winter Soldier starts. But think um, about think about yeah. the, but that's not even like. Think about how little to the majority of the audience uh, some people may feel about it. But I've I've never heard anyone say the sentence, the CW superhero universe is oversaturated. And those shows come out at the same time. Those shows aren't even one after the other. I've heard a lot They're... of people say that. <laughs> well, they probably say there's too much to watch. But, but do you know what I mean? Like, it's not... Compare that to this... This is much better. Each show's airing separately. Mm-hmm. Each show's dealing with a very different part of the. And they're universe. All, well, they're shorter as well. They're they're not all twenty episode seasons. Yeah, I think it would be different if we had like. Um, Do we know how many episodes think. Falcon and Winter Soldier is yet? By the way, it's another six episodes. No, I don't know. It's six episodes. Okay. I don't know. So wait a second. It's how many, sir? It's six. So one, two, right. three, four, five, six. So that ends on April the twenty. Third, so then that's another month between the end of that and Black Widow. Widow? No, not even a month. No, like two weeks from the end of that to Black Widow. I think. I think in. I think for for the general audience because we've had a whole year of of no Marvel and because we ended on such a big event, Endgame, and then obviously Far From Home, which felt very much like a epilogue to Endgame. Mm-hmm. Um, I think there's going to be. I think there's going to be a lot of excitement. I think. Uh, oh yeah, I, I and that's, that's I certainly what I hope. Don't as well. misunderstand. I, I, I'm with you. But like, okay, put it this way, right? Uh, between now and May, we have One Division six episodes, Falcon and Winter Soldier starting a, little, a month after that finishes six episodes. So we're getting an episode of television from January through to April. Then in when uh, till to late late April, then immediately early May. Black Widow, also May, Loki. Another six episodes. Yeah, but if you... if Weekly we assume... Marvel content for the next four months. And that's not yeah, including that's... What If for the summer, Chang- Shang-Chi for July, Eternals for November, and Ms. Marvel for the end of the year. <laughs> yeah, but WandaVision, Falcon, and Loki is only 18 episodes between all three. So it's, it's you know, it it's essentially one... See, it's, you know, Marvel series. is actually becoming a season of television. So it just yeah. dealing broken in three different parts. I think it would be different if they were all twenty four episodes and all airing at the same mm. time. 
Um, but I'm hoping, and this is, I think, you know, I'm I'm playing the the other side of the coin, mainly out of hope. Do you know what I mean? Like mainly out of what I want it to be, not necessarily because I don't know. It it all depends on the execution. But um, yeah. you know, one division and Falcon and Winter Soldier don't feel like a similar show, and you know yeah I, I mean i did make that i did make that debate in the case i did sort of make that as a defense for star wars being oversaturated to be fair which is the idea that mm. if they're all different enough i guess it's not going to matter um and marvel have you know they've made strides in places you know for things with a different tone guardians of the galaxy you know eternals itself looks like it's going to be something completely different as does shang chi and the ten rings so maybe maybe this is all me being concerned for nothing because uh, wandavision mm. particularly looks like it's going to be out of a bit out of left field as well so yeah okay yeah. um I, I don't know I, I well i guess time will tell on that one but I, it is something i am concerned about so, um, to zero sure. to zero in on um the fantastic four news i think yes. of all and i want everything to feel fresh but if if i was going to look at all the other marvel movies and someone was to say, pick a tone for Fantastic Four, mm. I would pick the Spider-Man tone. I think, you know, Taika Waititi's Thor is almost a bit too jokey. You mm. know, I think it's a good, you know, some of the more epic stuff doesn't feel, some of the Russo's work doesn't feel as family uh, heartwarming mm -hmm. it is but do you know what I mean as as much as I feel it would need to be Fantastic Four I, Guardians is a bit too again like Waikiti a bit too left field although it does have that family heartwarming but it's more of an R rated slant I think you know I think Watts is a great choice if it's got a similar tone and feel to the Spider-Man movies I think it's going to be the Fantastic Four movie that people want to see yeah, I would agree with that. I think Peyton Reed might have actually been another potentially interesting choice because the Ant Man movie. That's a fair had, point. Yeah, uh, uh, Peyton Reed's had another very sort of like he's got a light, colourful family approach to his movies. Yeah, um, that's for Marvel, a fair point. and I think he would have been another solid choice. I like Peyton a lot. Um, but yeah, no, I agree with you. I think you know there aren't there aren't many uh, directors that I think you that could that could do this movie and 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 you know they they describe them correctly as marvel's first family you know the marvel universe starts with the fantastic four and a lot of people don't know that but it, it, it that is the beginning of marvel Which is... um and 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 the idea that they might come in and sort of bring in a new and almost bring in a reset for them for the movies i feel like that's going to be a really traditional superhero movie with origin story and all and I, and I, and and while people be like oh no another fantastic four origin story yeah if you get it right though you won't be too sad um I, we just need that dream casting baby everyone yeah. knows the casting i'm talking about we need it <laughs> yeah if and if not that um your man from uh oh uh, god what's his name uh that was the, the what's the new Bly manor is it uh, oh yeah, I haven't know, seen it. The haunting of Bly yeah. Manor. What's his name? Uh, roll someone. Roll. Oh god, it's going to kill me. Let me look him up. It's going to drive me. Out. What, for I, those, for those... zombie. I know the casting you're okay. referring to. You're refer. You're referring to John Krasinski and Emily. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, Raul Coley would be my next choice for Reed Richards if if we can't get them. He's great. Um, I, I cool. think he'd be a good Reed Richards, and it would be, I think. Uh, a good move for diversity as well. Um, uh, the, the Fantastic Four are uh, historically very white. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's I fair. think yeah, it would yeah. be nice to get a bit of. But um, failing that, I, I yeah, a hundred percent. Like yeah, you get Reed Richards and uh, and Sue Storm being played by John Krasinski and Emily Blunt would be just the best thing ever. Um, yeah. Uh, both amazing. great actors, both very suited to those roles. Um, yeah, it would be, and they'd be, they'd be just about there. I mean, I think when it was first, people were talking about it was, was a few years ago, and they were, I thought they were slightly too young for it. But like, post, post, um, a quiet place, quiet and... place, and seeing him with the beard and stuff, I was like, yeah, no, that's that's the move. Um, there's a few other things I wanted to bring up. Oh, yeah, John Watts, uh, particularly. I mean, if, if anyone hasn't seen Cop Car, one of John Watts's earliest films before he got the, the the Marvel nod to come do Homecoming, you should. Um, he's a he is a, a weirdly versatile director. So I wouldn't even be surprised if he did something different, even from the tone of Homecoming for Fantastic Four. Um, it, 
yeah, so that's that's lots of versatility, some really interesting ways they could go with him. But briefly, I just want to hit on uh, the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special for just the genius mm. and the genius move of it. They're gonna yeah, get it's fantastic a film quality special written and directed by you know this is what I mean about movies and TV colliding now by James Gunn, you know film director who generally speaking honestly wouldn't get out of bed to film a tv show at these at this point he's too busy doing films and i don't mean that i'm not suggesting james gunn is snobby towards television he's just too busy making big budget movies right? is he not developing the spin-off then for to the suicide squad yeah but he's he's, he's a producer I, what is like yeah. he's right oh it's, 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 actually you're right he's writing it so yeah you're right okay but directing yeah. it i don't know about but yeah, you're right. I suppose for writing it for, for, for Peacemaker, right? Yeah, uh, but I, th- I to, think to, that was the report. Yeah, the genius of getting him to while he's filming Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three, also make this really weird creative Christmas special. Which, by the way, according to him, because I follow him on Instagram and Twitter, it was his idea and something he's been asking Disney to do for years. So it's come from a creative place, not a financial. <coughs> And while they're on the sets with the big fancy cameras and with the all-star cast and the very talented director who wants to do it, to just build that into the budget of volume three and make a TV thing out of it is fucking genius. Because it's going to feel like a Guardians movie, but it's not. It's going to be for Disney+. Plus. That's incredible it might only be 45 minutes long it might be an hour and a half i don't know i suspect about 45 minutes either way yeah that'd be my guess yes <laughs> i they must have a very clear plan for the gamora mm. of it all mustn't they yeah i think so yeah i don't know exactly what but yeah he's talked about being mildly inspired because he enjoyed the star wars christmas special as a kid too so i, I think there's gonna be some fun nods yeah i think it'll be more abstract than a movie i don't know if it will feel like a 45 minute guardians movie because i think if he's been inspired by that it will be more abstract than that yes um yeah and might go a bit all over the place um yeah i mean my my, my guess is that it's going to be star lord peter peter quill trying to get the rest of the gang into Christmas because uh, God has already threatened Karen, Karen Gillan that she's going to have to wear a, a, a Santa hat as Nebula and be moody about it uh, on Twitter. So <laughs> I, I, I think the, the premise may end up being Star-Lord tries to bring Christmas to the Guardians and they are not interested. Cause it, is it because uh, the rumours are the Chris Pratt's in Thor, isn't it? That was what came out as opposed to mm-hmm. th- Hemsworth being in Guardians because Thor mm-hmm. is first, isn't it? Yeah, correct. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. So I, I, find... I think we, as long as we set up the, the guardians are going off because they're still looking for Gamora or whatever in Thor, so that we don't have. I don't want the lingering questions from Endgame to to, to hinder the Christmas special, basically. <laughs> so give us some information about what they're up to in Thor. So because it's, I reckon, I reckon all the guardians will appear in Thor. Uh, they've only announced that Chris Pratt has signed up, but I reckon they're all going to show up, and I reckon it'll be brief. Like, it'll start where he's yeah. with them, and he'll sp- split off, and then they've just sort of been... It's like a cameo, you know, something in the first ten minutes. Something akin to Doctor Strange in uh, The Last Thor. Yeah, yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, Yeah, because, you know, he, he showed up, he had a scene with him, it was fun to see them interact, then they moved on. I think it's going to be that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, I think there's a, there's so much to be excited about here. Uh, Multiverse of Madness sort of spinning off from WandaVision and then having an impact on Spider-Man 3 and let's not even get into the insane rumours that have been coming out. Um, I'm still waiting what? for my call to be in Spider-Man 3. Um, I, 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 it's, well, it, I just want... Because everyone like, else is fucking showing up. <laughs> but it's difficult, isn't it? Because, like, they set up a really good Spider-Man 3, like, at the end of Far From Home, that, yes. d- that was good enough without all this multiverse madness Mm -hmm. i kind of almost want a a challenge for me is i can't i can't imagine Maguire and garfield coming back unless it's substantial so my hope is that in spider-man 3 it is just either embedded lightly throughout or at the end in an end game style you know jumping through portals to help battle and then we either get a spider-man 4 
that deals with them or mm-hmm. they get their own movies because I'm sorry, there's unfinished business with Garfield and a Maguire movie about an older Spider-Man struggling with the weight of being an older Spider-Man is, is an interesting pitch mm-hmm. to me. So either it's brief and then they get their own shit or more detailed in a sequel that would work for me, and then and therefore then the them coming back is the promise of of what happens next. I if do you it's want to hear if my... it's go yeah go on because if it's well just to finish that point if it's truly embedded throughout because oh and also you could then set up obviously the sinister sticks the same applies to the villains like I love the idea of mm-hmm. these villains being brought back to become the sinister sticks again. I don't know whether that's better in a sequel than shoehorned into this. I, if it's going to be, though, that the movie is trying to do both Sinister Sticks, Multiverse, Spider-Verse, and the following on from the events of the post credit scenes of Spider-Man mm. uh, Far From Home, that's that's trying to do a lot. Like, I have a pitch a that I think might make all three work. Do you want to hear what I think mm. they might do? Mm-hmm. Movie opens, Spidey's on the run. He's not been able to, you know, his, his, his identity's been revealed. The government's after him. Everyone's after him. They think he's they think he's done a murder, right? J. John Jameson's yelling, fucking Spider-Man. What a prick. That's a direct Someone, quote, I think, from the end of Far From Home. Someone, yeah. Someone's memorized that post credit sequence. <laughs> Absolutely. Spider-Man, what a prick. You know, he bangs his fist on the table. Um, I reckon then they, the government in an attempt to try and catch a superhero, maybe even S.H.I.E.L.D., turn to a scientist to help try and catch Spider-Man, and that person uses multiverse shit to pull Electro from the Garfield-verse, Doc Ock from the Maguire-verse, and combine them with our Vulture, and maybe, you know, they set up Scorpion, and um, maybe bring back some version of Mysterio through the multiverse gather the Sinister Six with the intention of catching Spider-Man for murder. They all go after him and he is then forced to turn to Doctor Strange at the towards the end of the movie, towards the final act, because he can't beat the Sinister Six alone and realising there is a multiverse and that that's where his enemies have come from, the answer is for him to turn to the multiverse to bring some some colleagues back, some some cohorts to help him fight off the mm. Sinister Six. And it's the end of the movie that we get the other Spider-Men slash women if they do do the Emma Stone Spider-Gwen thing, which is the rumour. Um, which I would want them to do. Because, I think yeah, be abs- awesome. 100%. Yeah, if they don't do that, riots in the streets. So, and then you get And then you get another movie of Garfield dealing with Spider-Gwen and Maguire dealing with being sure. old, maybe. If you want to do that, yeah, yeah absolutely. But my, my point is, if you make it that the reason they turn to a Sinister Six is because he done because of the ending of the last movie, Identity Revealed, the solution to him fighting the Sinister Six is to get the other Spider-Men in. And then, because there are multiple Spider-Men, that then immediately muddles the, the Identity Reveal mm. and helps him get away with being Peter Parker again. And returning to his life. Because other Spider-Men can pretend to be him. And he can be seen alongside Spider-Man and go, look, I'm not Spider-Man, here's Spider-Man. <laughs> you know, um, you know, yeah, put, put Andrew Garfield puts on the Holland suit for a bit and helps him prove he's not Spider-Man. You know, um, uh, or whatever. I know that's a very specific example. But my point is, you can deal with all of that in a plot like that. So that's kind of my pitch for that movie. And the interesting thing they re- I say revealed that was reported today, and I don't know how true this is, the source looks sketchy as fuck to me, but it was that Tobey Maguire had actually signed on, um, not just for that movie, but for Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Meaning that at some point, while Doctor Strange is tumbling through the multiverse, he might have a, like, a five minute, ten minute scene with Tobey Maguire, because of course Tobey Maguire's Spider Man. Films directed by Sam Raimi, who is directing Multiverse of Madness. Um, yeah. So there's a, that just makes too much sense, doesn't it, to not have Tobey yeah, Maguire and show up as Spider Man? And we could, um, and you could even have Doctor Strange inform Tobey Maguire's Spider Man, "You're not the Spider Man I know." And then that Spider Man is aware of a multiverse. So then, when Tom Holland goes to pick him up <laughs> in whatever this third movie is, he doesn't have to then explain. I'm a Spider-Man from the universe. He'd already know that there are multiverses and Spider-Man and stuff. It sounds all very complicated, but I actually think that's a really straightforward way to do both the Sinister Six, the multiverse stuff, and the murder 
sub, you know, yeah. spin-off plot from the other one in one story that could wrap up yeah, quite easily pitch. and be like almost end game levels spectacular, which is not something John Watts has had a chance to do yet. His movies have been quite I mean for for, for Marvel movies, low key, you know. And that is saying something because I mean obviously the last one Far From Home had a big, you know, giant tornado of insanity in London and stuff, but still low key compared to the Avengers stuff. This is his chance to do something on that kind of scale. I'll finally stop talking about that now, but that's that's genuinely where I think they're going with the Spider-Man stuff. No, I think that's a good pitch and it almost makes you me want cuz I don't think Yeah, cuz at the moment the kind of the last Spider-Man is appearing. Ah, although that might slightly put that. According to Wikipedia, Spider-Man 3 is before Doctor Strange. Uh, no, that's not correct. Oh, it is. Shit, yeah, it is. So that might affect some elements of that pitch, but I think it's a great pitch, though. But I kind of think if if Spider Man Three is going to be that, make it the last movie of the phase, because you know, shit, you know, it's it. Yeah. Whereas at the moment, Thor is the is the intended last movie of the phase. Um, yeah. So other than tweaking for that reordering, I think that's a great pitch. Yeah, I, I'm. I'd be that. That kind of solves my concerns about it being too much. So, what my point, I suppose, isn't they should do that. I suppose what my point is is there are ways to merge those plots in a way that they're not going to feel like stuff yeah, being shoehorned fair. in. Yeah. If it's yeah, baked because naturally if you... into the Spider-Man on the run plot, where what he's on the run from is a, a government trying to hunt down a murderer with superpowers, so they turn to the Sinister Six. Yeah, because to be fair, if you read the plot summary of Endgame, it looks like bad fan fiction. (laughs) Yeah. It does. With the the right writers, though, you can make it Yeah, but with with the right writers, it's brilliant. So, Mm -hmm. yeah, no, that's that's fair. That's fair. Um, So I'm pumped. And I do love that, like, because it is funny, even though... Spide the alternative Spider Man and and for some people Blade, a kind of all Marvel has in terms of turning to that multiverse. Well, apart from X Men and Deadpool, I suppose it does still feel like it's it rivals what DC have got because DC, DC's advantage is the rich history with you know with Bale as Batman and Keaton as Batman mm-hmm. and the uh, the uh, former TV shows and the CW universe you know DC has the arguably bigger multiverse to play with but Marvel seem to almost have an attitude of yes yeah, all right Spider-Man's enough like you know yeah. uh, but imagine imagine introducing Hugh Jackman into the mix you know it's yeah and Ryan Reynolds. That's yeah. I, I don't. Th- I I I, th- they're, they're, I do. Th- you know, the word is Marvel are doing a Deadpool movie. Um, they might put it out under Fox still. You know, with the Fox logo rather than the Disney logo, yeah. but they are doing it. Um, and with the rights that they now have, there's no reason Deadpool couldn't have cameos from other. You know, uh, big Marvel heroes. Um, you know, it's got a lot more license now to do some of the insane shit we know Deadpool has done. Deadpool three could be an adaptation of Deadpool kills the Marvel Universe, which is a which is a particularly popular yeah. Deadpool storyline. Where I mean, I don't want to spoil it, but Deadpool goes and assassinates I mean, the most <laughs> most of the Marvel Universe. So, yeah, but I do think it's more because when when the when the acquisition first happened. Mm. A lot of people were theorizing and suggesting that that Marvel would use Deadpool as the way into, you know, the the multiverse. And I think using Doctor Strange instead is is more appropriate and a better fit for the universe they've already mm-hmm. created. You know, if Deadpool was going to do that, I'd almost want it to be cameos and fictional in Deadpool's way. Do you know what I mean? Like, he's yeah, not... Well, the, the other problem is Deadpool's yeah. going to have to be R-rated because the last two were. And it, you can't yeah. set up such a big, important part of your franchise in a movie 
most of well a, a large chunk of your audience can't watch because they're not old yeah. enough you, you you just it's just not a way to do it um yeah deadpool absolutely has the freedom to acknowledge that he's part of a franchise in quote marks and then just wander from the old x-men into the new marvel universe and be like quicksilver which one <laughs> you know and make jokes about yeah. the fact that like you know what i mean that, that you know um wonder 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 is in is, is, is in scarlet witch she's She's a mutant, right? Not quite. Why? Like you, you know, you, you. What's a mutant? You know, like you. There's a lot of pl- so much room to make fun of the weirdness of the of the situation there. But you, you don't. You couldn't use him to set up a multiverse. I don't think. Uh, not realistically. Do you, do you feel one last Marvel question? Do you feel slightly bad in a way for for all the other actors involved in the Netflix shows because the only name that I see talked about, rumoured, wanted, etc., is Charlie Cox's Daredevil. Yeah. <laughs> like, and, and Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, they were good shows. Like, The Punisher, like, it's only, yeah. only Iron John Fist. Ber- really John Berthenhall as, as Luke Cage, was, he, no, sorry, Luke Cage as, um, as Punisher was amazing. The, the, yeah, yeah. the, the yeah. Iron Fist was kind of, and you, some would, could argue the Defenders, were the only real co- sort of flops of the bunch, but it is only Charlie Cox that's ever talked about <laughs> It's funny, isn't it? Um, yeah, I mean, people want him. People really liked his particular portrayal of Daredevil. I know uh, the rumor is he's also part of the fucking in Spider Man Spider Man yeah. movie. So God knows. God, and knows. I heard a rumor. I heard a rumor as well that um, about She Hulk and him too, which would also yes, be because well, that that now that makes a lot of sense to me because obviously she's a lawyer. She's going to be in that realm of of law and stuff. The idea she might bump into a Matt Murdock, not necessarily <laughs> a Daredevil, is is very sensible fun nice way to sort of make sure that the we are we, we're confirming these universes doing that would be would be nice for me because i just feel it i feel like i got tricked and lied to if they if they cast someone else as luke cage jessica jones daredevil i'd be happy with them recasting iron first but that's a different issue um you know i would feel like dis, d- d- dismissing those netflix shows as not canon would be would would make me feel like I was lied to because though they sold me on those those shows as what these shows are you know w- yeah. when we're looking now at Moon Knight and She Hulk and Ms Marvel that's what they pitched Daredevil Luke yeah. Cage Jessica Jones as which is like oh we're gonna do the TV Avengers uh, you know and now Disney have their own rights to it they're doing that and I'm I'm happy they are there's some really good stuff in here particularly I think Ms Marvel and She Hulk are the two I'm uh, Moon Knight as well I'm I'm excited about all these give me Ironheart you know fuck it like yeah why not but I, I wouldn't want them to decanonize my Daredevil you know I I watched those shows with the understanding they were in the Marvel universe and if they recast all those characters or bring in new versions of them with different suits or whatever without acknowledging those shows. If they bring in Kingpin to Spider-Man, which they should, because Kingpin is a big Spider-Man villain as well as a Daredevil villain, it has to be Vincent D'Onofrio. <laughs> I'll be very sad if it isn't. <laughs> One, because Vincent D'Onofrio is a fucking brilliant Kingpin. <laughs> Starters. But two, I don't like the idea that they sold me on these shows and then pulled the rug out from under me at a later date and said, nah, they don't count. That's That sucks. Like, no. I, I You know, me and many other people pay for but Netflix. It, the, to, we yeah, want I, to watch those shows. <laughs> I completely agree with you, but the fear is that the the multiverse makes it too easy to. Do you know what I mean? Because they can just go, oh, it's a different universe. And then people would go, hold on, but they reference New York. They reference Iron Man. Yeah, different New York, different Iron Man. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's too... It's worrying. It's really worrying. It's too easy. I suppose what they could do, what they could do, which would just about tote the line, and it would almost be like that Star Trek thing, you know, from the first J.J. Abrams Star Trek movie where they sort of like had their cake and ate it too by saying, oh, this is a separate timeline. So this is Kirk and Spock, but this timeline has diverged. So whatever happens in this doesn't fuck with that thing you love, you know, that Star Trek series yeah. you love. So the fans can still have their Star Trek series unbesmirched by any content from the movie. What they could do is say that those TV shows did take place in an alternate New York. But those actors can portray our main universe's versions of them. Yeah, exactly, because then you get... So their their backstories can be slightly different or they can wear a slightly different costume or whatever. Well, I think what's key is probably less violent. (laughs) 
Well, yeah, that too. Um, yeah, that's that. Yeah, it's a good point because Disney probably want to distance themselves, particularly from Daredevil. I think. Uh, Dare- wow, God, Jessica Jones has all sorts of connotations about exploitation and rape, and so yeah, wow, uh, yeah, it's, it's a good point. I hadn't even thought of that. Um, so the idea of sort of putting them in their own universe but keeping the actors could be a way of making getting that getting to eat their cake and have their cake and eat it too, as I, as we say. Uh, the other thing I wanted to very briefly talk about before we wrap up uh where is it there was something i just saw and i said i want to talk about that and then i've lost it we haven't really talked about secret invasion so let's just quickly end on secret invasion Mm. this is insane secret invasion as a comic is a bunch of like a ship lands and out gets captain america hulk thor you know or in the comics and i know they're going to change it obviously all the heroes. So it's a group of the heroes facing a group of the heroes, and they don't understand where they've come from. If it's a time thing, if it's a whatever thing, and what it turns out in the end is that it is a scroll invasion, and they start taking the identities of heroes and 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 beating them, and then it's it becomes who's who, and, def- and and Earth has basically been secretly invaded by people pretending to be people from Earth. The Marvel TV version of that isn't going to be the same because we're not going to have Captain America, we're not going to have Thor, we're not going to have Iron Man, probably. But there is lots and lots of room for the Skrulls to take the um, identities of the other Marvel TV characters. Ms. Marvel, Moon Knight, She-Hulk, Ironheart. So you could almost get Secret Invasion... So far, they've only announced it's going to be Nick Fury and Ben Mendo Mendelssohn himself coming back as Talos. But Secret Invasion could become the defenders of these Disney Plus shows. Mm. Easily. Mm. Or at least feature cameos from fucking everyone. <laughs> because yes, the scrolls definitely. can become anyone. <laughs> um, yeah, that that's is... the thing. No, uh, only... Only with the, with the Guardians of the Galaxy special holiday special, mm-hmm. and with Mark Ruffalo in She Hulk, mm-hmm. they could use those absolutely. But the only Avenger still on the table that's not appearing in a Disney Plus show is Hemsworth. <laughs> like, do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? All the all the others essentially. Well, I suppose. Okay. Well, no, actually, that's wrong, isn't it? Captain Marvel, Black Panther, etc. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Forget that. Um, and Spider Man and. And Spider Man, yeah, okay, yeah, that was bollocks. Never mind. Doctor Strange. Um, but yeah, all right. <laughs> but, um, I was wrong. No, but so yes, you're right. I think doing it, doing it with these characters makes more sense. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's fair. So I'm, I'm really excited at what they could do with Secret Invasion. Um, the idea of Nick Fury yeah. and Talos teaming up and there's scrolls everywhere, potentially hopefully because that's the kind of premise of the original comic particularly mimicking superheroes like imagine that nick fury gathers together you know that team you know the ms marvel she hulk moon knight ironheart and one of them turns out to be a scroll and the real moon knight or whatever is locked in a basement somewhere and they've got to say like there's so much stuff you can do with it it's so exciting i but am it like could've... it's very on board it is this. it is also i think a good use of nick fury because part of me yes. thought afterwards i was like oh although is it because you know there was rumors of it being literally called fury and it being about or solely based about nick fury yes and then i was like well part of me wants to explore more of nick fury and you know get into his backstory and, and do a bit more character stuff on him you know his appearance yeah. in age of ultron is particularly cameo like whereas his work in winter soldier where he had a lot more to do i think is uh is a lot stronger but then you go, hmm, on the other hand, when we get answers about Nick Fury, when Nick Fury is developed, you know, thinking in particular, obviously, of Captain Marvel, the answer to the question, what happened to your eye? Like, actually, <laughs> is this a better use of that character? Almost, where almost it's certainly. His, yeah, it's his show, but he is not the focus, and he can do what he does best. I still want more Winter Soldier style depth with the character. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think you could go too far with that and slightly undo his attitude and cool and approach in the other show, in the other movies. Mm. Do you think as well they could use the multiverse thing to explain sort of 
to put Agents of Shield, the that awful Inhuman se- series, and some of the ABC stuff in their own little box as well. Yeah, but you can't. What? Yeah, but what are you are you talking about? Like the the because I'm I'm thinking to... about Clark Gregg. Am I right? Because I only watched it once. And I need to watch it again. But in the Falcon and Winter Soldier trailer, there's a shot of what looked like Agent Coulson. Am I right? I thought Was that? that? Yeah, I thought that. Um, I mean, yeah, I watched um... it on Twitter in, in in admittedly low res, and I need to watch it again properly now. It's on. I'm assuming it's on YouTube somewhere. That's Clark Gregg, right? So, like, if they're yeah. bringing back Coulson, how do, are they are they going with the Agents of Shield explanation for why he's alive? Because that explanation was kind of shitty. Um, <laughs> yeah, I do you think uh, the multiverse is going to allow them to pick and choose what they? Do you know Keep what I mean? Cannon. They count Charlie Cox, but they don't count Iron Fist. They, you know, mm-hmm. and yeah, I think they could do that. But you know what? Also, Marvel's so powerful that you could just have Charlie Cox as Daredevil. And if people went, oh, sorry, is he is he the Charlie Cox Daredevil from Daredevil? And they'd just be like, maybe, or he might be this world's one. Yeah. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. that's the thing. You don't even need to answer any of it. Yeah. Um but well, yeah, yeah because because the... only nerds like us give a shit. Honestly, Charlie Cox Daredevil shows up in fucking the next Spider-Man movie. Ninety-nine percent of the audience aren't going. Well, is this Charlie Cox Daredevil the same one from the Netflix show, or is this Charlie Cox Daredevil a different? They're not going to care. It's not going to matter. So yeah. he's not going to need to walk in and immediately pull out a chart and go, "This is how the timelines work, and this is where I'm from." No one's going to have that question for him, and he's not going to need to answer it. We're just going to have to figure it out for ourselves. But it does opening up the multiverse does give Marvel the excuse to shrug off some of that stuff and just and 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 for the nerds who give a shit kevin feige can come out and say right so that's who this is that's who this is can we all go home and now and sleep um <laughs> which is both how i felt the night all this news is coming out and how i feel right now uh, <laughs> so we marathon our way through this information <laughs> um, but it's it is interesting i i just i'm looking at how they're going to do it and i'm just like fascinated as to what they're going to be able to keep in canon and what they're not but obviously again you're right none of that's going to matter Ultimately, yeah. is it? They're, they're gonna, they're, it's not, they're not going to give up five minutes of the Spider Man movie to explain where every specific Spider Man's from. And nor should it? they, by the way. No, right. no, agreed. Yeah, agreed. So this is all uh, because completely not irrelevant, but this is this is like nerd debate that happens <laughs> offside that just doesn't actually really affect the wider whole, does it? And it's been proven that you don't need to because they mm-hmm. didn't do it in spite of Into the Spider Verse and that worked fine. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Do you know what yeah. I mean? They didn't stop and give us the backstories of all those individual Spider-Men, and no one had a problem with it. Who are you? All right, people, let's do this one last time. My name is Peter B. Parker. I was bitten by a radioactive spider, and for the last 22 years, I thought I was the one and only Spider-Man. Uh, honestly, if this is this Spider-Man three is is a Spider-Verse movie, like properly with Tobey Maguire and, and Andrew Garfield, it's gonna make all the money. I, I, I the nostalgia yeah. for the Tobey Maguire years, the missed opportunity of the Garfield years, plus the the, the current affection for the the Marvel owned and run i say owned the, the marvel run tom holland version of the character it, it, it's 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 a recipe for money is what that is <laughs> and i think i think you could then spin off more movies with garfield and Maguire and they yeah if still, if if they if, they if, if, well. if sony want to make more money off the property they own that's the way to do it because from their perspective they're only making what 50 percent now or 30 40 percent or whatever off this movie because it's because of the the renegotiation they did with marvel the smart thing to do is go okay marvel you can have a higher percentage of the next homecoming movie um and that character lives in your universe but we're going to set up a multiverse so we can also do a bunch of shit that we own that's nothing to do with you and it's going to make us a fuck ton of money um yeah because we haven't even talked about Tobey Maguire won a Sinister Six movie. That fucking Aunt May is a Russian spy movie they were talking about, whatever bollocks that was. They can do that all now, and it doesn't matter. And oh, it I hope they don't them, do the plan. And it also, and it also gives them license to do something with their Venom. With with, <laughs> with their version of Venom. And, and Morbius, yeah, of course. Well. Yeah, yeah, of course. So, uh, yeah, although I heard that, that pitch for like what the rumoured Amazing Spider-Man 3 would have been is nuts. Like, mm. awful. Like, just <laughs> appalling. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, um, anyway. uh, yeah. So the, 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 in summary for the Marvel stuff, Secret Invasion is potentially 
going to be the end game of all these fucking Netflix shows, but each one looking really good. They're all looking really unique and interesting to me. Um, they're carrying the tones of their respective properties with them, it looks like, which is good. Falcon and Winter Soldier does feel like a Winter Soldier film spin-off. Um, the, uh, you know, Loki does seem like it's going to be Thor-esque in its comedy and its universe sort of time-bending madness. Um WandaVision looks... I mean, WandaVision... I don't even know where to start with WandaVision. Uh, I mean, Doctor Strangey might actually be the way it goes, which is, makes sense, because she's going to appear in the next Doctor Strange. Um, and then all the stuff, the other stuff they're setting up and working on in the background, like your Iron Hearts, your Ms. Marvels, your Hawkeyes, all, all, all looking like they're going to be something good as well. So, yes, it, there's a potential for oversaturation here, but... Uh, there's a lot of really exciting products coming up. And for those... And yeah. can I just, and one last little note, actually. For all the fucking pretentious twats going, this is ridiculous. Everyone's getting excited about a thousand more franchise things from Disney, from Star Wars and Marvel, when they're not watching the movies of Terrence Malick or whatever. I like movies, too. I, 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 <laughs> not everything needs to be thoughtful yeah. drama i i like a good oscar bait movie i like a, a you know a really interestingly shot meticulously put together piece of art but i also like roller coasters well i personally actually i don't but in, in, in the analogy you know i can go to an art gallery and enjoy a, a really beautiful drawing and people can also go to a, a, a theme park and and enjoy and it, those two things don't clash it's okay for someone to like fine art and junk food <laughs> and, yeah, and, and and also i think like it's not like fine art uh, fine art is suffering with the current situation but it's not like fine art also wasn't getting a crack at the whip i mean roma like marriage story nominated mm-hmm. for loads of oscars like you know what i mean so yeah. and more accessible than ever thanks to netflix so yes yeah yeah, so I like I'm allowed to be excited for this Marvel stuff and this Star Wars stuff. I, I am. I think that's that's fine. I I can I can still enjoy you know the next masterpiece when it drops. You know from from whatever high profile director you choose to. You know I'm looking forward to watching Mank from David Fincher, which is supposed to be a, a, a brilliant film. I can also be excited that I'm going to get to see Ironheart punch someone or She-Hulk, yeah. you know, fight Tim Roth's abomination. Like I, I, I'm allowed to be excited for both. They don't... Okay, this is the thing I'm trying to get to. They're not mutually exclusive. Yeah. You don't have to, you don't have to pick a lane. You can like many things. <laughs> and, I, and I reserve the right to, while being nervous at Disney's weird determination to absolutely dominate the streaming wars with this then series of announcements, uh, which I haven't looked, but must have bumped their stock price up through the fucking roof. Must have done. Um, must I'm, have I'm done. allowed to be excited for this. I think it's fine. So can, everyone can, that, it's, a, it's a very fine high horse you sat on, but please get off it. You look like a prick. <laughs> Is what and I'm that thinking. ends. And that ends our Disney announcements. <laughs> <laughs> um, it just pissed me off. I just saw a lot of people tweeting that sort of stuff since that those announcements. Like, oh, my, my Twitter feed's just full of idiots who like explosions and colours instead of good movies and art. And I'm like, oh, shut up. Yeah, there's, <laughs> room for, there's room for all of it. Yeah. I just yeah. Um so uh yeah, um thanks everyone for listening uh, to our little bonus. I say a little, it's been what's it, two hours? Nearly the length of a normal nothing but static. So um for those of you listening to this on the audio feed, thank you very much for, for sticking with us. Anyone who's listened to this on YouTube, there's a there's a slightly longer version of this with with an extended intro um on the on our nothing but static um audio uh channel. Although if you're here if you're listening to this on the YouTube channel, you probably just wanted to hear us talk about the actual announcements so which is why which is why that is what it is um so there you go thanks very much for listening everyone um i don't have anything to add other than oh yeah you can get us in all the usual place obviously twitter and uh, patreon patreon.com slash nothing but static um we'll have another episode out in a week where chris is gonna take us through the uh oh, the very exciting christmas tv lineup oh it's gonna be gonna be a good one this year <laughs> So yeah, um, uh, obviously all, all, all the usual shit. Like I don't know what to, I don't know. Like I'm trying, like I'm trying for, to think con- the- for context. We did another podcast before this. So Dan and I have been talking and podcasting 
since 10 o'clock four, and four it's hours two now. o'clock <laughs> so so that's we've why been, we're we've like, been podcasting yeah. for four hours so i am dead to the world um it's a long time to be podcasting um but yeah thank you very much for listening everyone um uh, twitter at dan Doolan, at c billingham youtube.com slash nothing but static uk if you want to hear steven university analyzing avatar patreon.com slash nothing but static if you want to if you want to donate a little to our to the, to the cause that is nothing but static you also get episodes a week early um for analyzing avatar and we just recorded a very special bonus piece of content that will be Patreon exclusive, uh, which is called Nothing But Claps, where we, <laughs> where we, where Chris asks me clap-related questions that I then answer. It's very exciting. Um, and that so, was, yeah. and yes, if you're doing the maths, that all that was also nearly two hours long. Yep. So it's quite that, and that is what we recorded this morning before doing this. So yeah, um, thanks so much for listening. Uh, we'll see you on the next one. I've been Dan Doolan. Oh, I've been Chris Pilligan. And we'll be back in a week's time for more Nothing But Static. Booyah. Boom. I need a piss. I mean, I've got, yeah, I've got nothing. I've got nothing to give, Dan. Nothing I haven't even... Give. I haven't even Googled a joke. Hold on, let me. Marvel related <laughs> yeah. jokes. I don't Here know we go, started. Dan. Mm-hmm. Here we go. Right. I really need Hold a piss. On. I've drunk I have drunk three pints of water and a giant cup of tea in the time we've been doing all these podcasts. Well, so I really you can't, need to... you can't pee until the joke. Uh <laughs> which is why I want you to hurry up with the joke. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. Yep. What does Captain ready. America say? What does Captain America say when he wants an orchestra? <laughs> I don't know. Avengers Ensemble. Fuck you for making me hold my pee for that. <laughs> why why was why was Thanos so crazy, Dan? <laughs> don't know why was Thanos so crazy. He snapped. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hate you. Can I go to the toilet now, please? <laughs> yeah. Bye. Bye.